25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I am looking forward to hearing about this next topic. We have a book. I, I don't think the book arrived, but we the book is called Silent Voices, People with Mental Disorders. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I have it. I have it right here. I, I, I'm looking forward to this one. Hold on, hold on. Let me get everything set over here. With David. David Muth is on the phone. I'm sorry. I was just, we were rushed up to the end there, so I jumped ahead. Perspectives on the restoration of the Mississippi Delta. This is an interesting one. The once and future Delta, the estuaries of the world. David is the director of the Mississippi River Delta Restoration Campaign for the National Wildlife Federation in New Orleans. Uh, and I, you know, you hear so many things about uh, the environment and how it's, it's changed and how we need to be paying attention to it. I don't know that I've heard anything about the Mississippi Delta, and maybe it's because I don't live there, but I think we need to pay attention to all these things. It, after all, does run into the same Gulf of Mexico that we swim in down here in Florida. David Muth, good morning, David. Good morning. Thank oh, you. Thank you. And where are you right now? I'm in New Orleans. Um, tell me about the Delta itself. Uh, what, are there homes on the Delta? Well, there's uh, two million people on the Delta. The city of New Orleans sits on the Mississippi River Delta uh, and yeah. many other coastal communities in Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, and it, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's one of the it's the scene of one of the the biggest environmental crises uh, that our country faces, which is that we're losing uh, a football field of land every hour in the uh, in the Delta. And that's really one of the great engines of the productivity of the Gulf of Mexico, the estuaries of the Mississippi River Delta. So how, that's why the concern. How are we losing a football field? How are we doing that? We're losing it to, to erosion and to subsidence uh, and to decisions that we made a long time ago. The Mississippi... Uh, built uh, a vast delta on the coast of Louisiana, and beginning as soon as Europeans arrived here, we we started managing that delta and and preventing the Mississippi from spreading its sediment and fresh water around. It's levied, it's channelized, and as a consequence, the forces of erosion are winning, and the river's unable to build new land. So we're trying to to change that equation. So it would really look a lot different right now if we hadn't done all those things. If, uh, of course, way back then, we had no way of knowing what effect we had on, on the environment. We know it better now. So what do we do? How do we turn back the clock, or do we just do something different? Uh, we, we do something different. So uh, the Mississippi historically built land in one area and while other land eroded away it's it's the, the newest land on the continent there's nothing here that's older than a few thousand years uh, so what we have to do is let it start building land again and the way to do that given that there are two million people and and the largest port system in the world uh, is to do it in a very controlled and considered way we call those sediment diversions uh, and the idea is simply that we will try to build uh, uh, gaps through the levee system, very highly controlled engineered gaps that allow the spring flood to get out of the river and back into the wetlands that are, that are degrading. And the calculations are that we can begin building land again uh, and offset the land loss. And that's incredibly important to the whole Gulf of Mexico. Are the uh, ships or, or the boats that are traveling up and down the Mississippi, not just for pleasure, but for business, do they have new codes as far as construction to adhere to? Uh, there's a, a revolution going on in, in, you know, in ocean going shipping because of the redesign of the Panama Canal and the need for deeper, uh, 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 deep, deeper channels to get into the ports. The ports that, that line the lower Mississippi River ca carry the largest volume uh, in the world. They, they carry, you know, all the agricultural products from the central United States, corn and wheat and soybeans. They carry uh, petrochemicals into and out of the, uh, out of the country. And so it's, it's vitally important that, that what we do here um, doesn't affect the navigation system, because that would be a uh, a serious problem for the for the world's economy, frankly. Yeah. So that's one of the challenges. How do you manage the river both for navigation and for restoration? And and the fact is, we believe that it can be done, uh, and and we're 
we're hoping to use the money that comes from the BP disaster to make it happen. Oh, okay. Now, now in the restoration of the Everglades, just to kind of use that as a, a way for me to get a handle on this, the the environmentalists were kind of up against the resistance of the sugar farmers, if I remember that that whole fight. Um, but it sounds like the the industrial side of your equation is. Well, it sounds like your work, you've, you've kept them in mind with whatever restoration you're proposing, correct? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the key to our success here is, is to make sure that uh, the economy not only doesn't suffer, but that it, it in the end benefits. If we lose the great coastal buffer, the great marshes that buffer the city of New Orleans, the port of New Orleans, the petrochemical corridor along the Mississippi River, then all of those uh, businesses are going to suffer, and, and they recognize that. Uh, we've come together in Louisiana to create what we call the Master Plan, which was uh, adopted by the legislature in, in 2012, uh, and it had broad support from industry, uh, uh, from environmental groups, from citizens groups, from, from local uh, uh, constituencies here in the co on the coast of Louisiana. But we have a long way to go ahead, and we are uh, trying to make sure that everybody's at the table so that the plan that we come up with doesn't run into roadblocks. Is, is it um, farmland at all? Is there any, any agriculture on the Delta? There is agriculture on the Delta. The, uh, the, the primary crop is sugarcane, and it's grown really right along the banks of the Mississippi River and uh, and some of its former channels. Uh, that's where the high ground is in the Delta, very fertile land. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's, a, that's another constituency that has to be kept in mind. But those, uh, those folks are threatened by, by sea level rise, by subsidence, by salt creeping into the water table. So their solution is our solution as well. We have to get the fresh water and the sediment distributed better in order to keep the whole system together. Now, if, if um, climate change is affecting this, and the notes that were provided to me indicate that that is the case, then the world's, re re the world's response to the call for something to be done is is going to affect the little areas of the world uh, and little i mean in in comparison to the whole planet but but the mississippi delta and other deltas i'm guessing other deltas are going to be affected as well as uh, as well as all coastal regions yeah i think i think deltas are really ground zero for climate change because in addition to sea level rise which after all no matter what the projections uh, sea level rise is very tiny incremental change from year to year very hard for people to see uh, until it's built up. But deltas are new ground, and so they they're tend to be subsiding very rapidly. There are parts of the Mississippi River Delta that subside six feet a century. Uh, so that, that has actually meant that people see changes in their own lifetime. So dealing with climate change, where you're going to see it first all over the world is in the world's great deltas. Is potential fracking in other states and going to be an issue about the survival of the Mississippi? Well, I don't think it's directly related, but uh, you know how how we deal with with uh, energy and and uh, uh, carbon pollution in the future is clearly uh, is clearly what's going to control the rate of sea level rise uh, in, in future decades, and so that's very important. The one thing that deltas have over the rest of the world, uh, you know, as, as most areas sink uh, uh, or as sea level rises, there's not a lot that can be done. Luckily, the Mississippi River carries a tremendous amount of sediment, and right now we're wasting most of it. It's going into deep water and not building land, but uh, it can build land against uh, uh, reasonable rates of sea level rise, and that's, that's what we're trying to design now is sediment diversions that'll that'll keep up with sea level rise and, and build land to protect New Orleans, other coastal communities, and the navigation system. And and is it all sediment, or is there any soil brought in? Uh, it's it's the soil. I mean, basically, what flows down the Mississippi River is everything from That's it, the, huh? the, the the eroded uh, Rocky Mountains and the uh, uh, and the topsoil from 
uh, areas that erode all over the, the mm-hmm. Ohio, Missouri, and Upper Mississippi valleys. In, in order, so it, it's incredibly good soil. Uh, uh, we just have to get it out of the river and and into the wetlands. In, in order to try to understand this, before you came on, Robert and I did a little research, and there was an article in USA Today a couple of years ago talking about how the the business was being affected by those very things you're talking about. Is is that because uh, well, I'm not even going to I don't even know how to ask the question. Just how why is that happening, and, and does the efforts of like the Army Corps, if if they are rebuilding areas, does that change that? Does it stop it? Well, the you know the the Army Corps of Engineers was was given responsibility for the Lower Mississippi River Delta after the Great Flood in 1927, and they built uh, what is arguably uh, one of the greatest public works projects in in world history, which is the uh, the levee system that protects uh, the entire uh, Lower Mississippi Valley from from flooding. They also have built uh, one of the most important navigation systems in the world that start at the jetties at the mouth of the river below New Orleans, uh, where the ocean going ships come in and out of the river, you know, all the way up to the last lock and dam up the Ohio and upper Mississippi or Missouri rivers. Uh, but they were not charged uh, with managing uh, the adjacent ecosystem. I guess. And, yeah. and there's been a cost to that. And, and they are now. They now have been charged with Congress of sort of adding a third leg to their mission, uh, and that is uh, restoration. So navigation, flood control, and restoration. The problem, of course, is to find the money and to find the space and to find the political will uh, to do that. And that needs to be done up and down the river. My own concern and and the concern of this book is what happens right down here at the mouth uh, or near the mouth of the river. But those those things need to be done up and down the Mississippi River. The book, again, is called Perspectives on the Restoration of the Mississippi Delta, the Once and Future Delta Estuaries of the World. Uh, David Muth is our guest. He's the director of the Mississippi River Delta Restoration Campaign for the National Wildlife Federation in New Orleans. And we need to take a little break, David, so we'll uh, check in on the weather, and then we'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. We'll see some clouds and sun today with a few showers and a thunderstorm arriving in the afternoon inland. High 84 to 88. Mostly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm near the coast. Low 72 to 76. Clouds and sunshine tomorrow with a few showers and a thunderstorm. High 86 to 90. Sunday mostly cloudy with a few more showers and a thunderstorm. High 87 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Steve Travis. Look who just walked in the room, Joel Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joel, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joel, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. Now's the time of the year you're evaluating your expenses, planning your budget, and finding ways to save money and increase efficiency to maximize profits. Dex Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333. Or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X-Imaging.com. Or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. On this episode of What Not To Do, brought to you by Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. 
Okay, easy. All right, set her down. Over there. Easy. What are you doing? Oh, honey, you're home early. Um, nothing. Really? Because it looks to me like you've torn up the entire yard with this giant tractor. Not all of it. There is a small section over there I didn't That's get. not even funny. Why are you tearing up my yard? Well, the sprinkler head broke. So you thought it was a good idea to fix it with a huge tractor? Well, not at first, but then when I tried to fix it, I hit the main line. Thought it would be a good idea you if... all of this was a good idea? Here's an idea. Why don't you just call Mike Scott Plumbing? It's that easy. In fact, let me help you out with that. 237-2888. But it's the weekend. I know. They don't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. Remember the commercials? If water runs through it, they do it. And they're already on their way. So get this monstrosity out of my yard. On next week's episode of What Not To Do. A crane. Really? All right, thank you for waiting through the break. David Muth is on the phone. Uh, we're talking about the Mississippi Delta. The book he has written is called Perspectives on the Restoration of the Mississippi Delta. Uh, David, thank you for uh, waiting through the break. You know, what came to mind during the break was um, um, I'm a fan of Anthony Bourdain, the, the, the food guy. Yeah. And apparently he visited your area and uh, did, a, did a show on, well, on the food and on the Mississippi Delta. And, but the one thing that resonated with me because I'm also from New York, was that he he stayed away from that area. He'd go to Saudi Arabia, he'd go to he'd go to Iran, he'd go to Cambodia, Liberia, you know. Mm-hmm. But he would stay away from from the New Orleans area for some reason. And um, and when he got there, he realized that it had made such a contribution to all of us, not just with the food, but also with the music from the area. And, and so many different things. The culture, the culture that became American culture mm-hmm. spawned from that area. Yes. Too. So I, I, I don't know that it has much to do with the restoration of the Mississippi Delta. But, but I guess to pay attention to something means to pay attention to everything associated with it, I guess. I think absolutely. And it, it has everything to do with the restoration of the Delta. You know, the, the, the culture that was built in South Louisiana uh, was very much tied to uh, to the environment, to the abundant seafood that was available, to uh, the millions of ducks and geese that winter here in the in uh, that come from all over the interior part of North America, uh, the, just the abundance of life that was here is was a big contributor to uh, to the whole culture and the cuisine, the music of South Louisiana. So. Uh, we very much see restoration of the Delta as tied to preservation uh, of, of the vibrant culture that's here. Are, are there special things that you have when movies film there that when they use uh, different areas around mm-hmm. the uh, Delta that, need, that, that they need to put it back exactly the way it was before they arrived? Uh, you mean in terms of their, the permits they received to do work down here? Yes, or, sir. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, this, this is a, a pretty delicate place, but at the same time, it's pretty resilient. Uh, you can damage it, but you can also rebuild it, which is one of the, the great hopes that we have. We've lost almost 1,900 square miles since the 1930s. Wow. But, wow. Uh, that, that's, that's an area, you know, the size of Delaware that's lost from the Louisiana coast. It's that's a- gone, but we can start building new land again. It sounds like... We're all in agreement. It's, it's I, I don't I don't see the other side. Is there a fight? There are concerns uh, because uh, you know the you mentioned uh, seafood. Uh, Louisiana produces uh, you know most of the uh, or the highest amount of uh, oysters, of brown shrimp, white shrimp, uh, blue crabs. And all of those, uh, all of those important seafood crops are estuarine. They they live in a certain balance of fresh and salt water. In order to do the work that has to be done, we're going to change those balances, um, and so we're going to move things around. Uh, where seafood uh, thrives now, there there's going to be different seafood, and uh, the things like oysters are going to be moved uh, in the estuaries. And that's obviously a concern and a very real concern for those who uh, who are harvesting them right now. Again, we're quite certain based on the science and on the history of how these industries evolved in Louisiana that uh, we can preserve those industries and, in fact, enhance them. Uh, but there is going to be a, a difficult transition for people, and we're very sensitive to that. 
Uh, and so there is uh, there is some hesitation uh, among with with some folks about about what's being proposed. When, Unfortunately, um, the, um, um, yeah. Oh no, go go, ahead. go 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 ahead, sir. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the the future for these industries, if all of coastal Louisiana continues to disappear at the rate that it is, is also not very good because uh, that seafood depends on that estuarine environment. It depends on those marshes. So if the marshes erode and subside away, there's not going to be anything to support that seafood. So we have to strike a balance. And when, when people uh, build uh, housing units and things like that, they like to bring in uh, non-native uh, plants. Uh, do you regulate that also? Well, again, we're, we're a, an, an advocacy group, so we don't get to regulate anything. Mm. But, um, but there, that's a, exotic plants are a very big concern in the Delta uh, like they are in Florida. Um, it's not quite as bad here because we do still get a winter here, but uh, but we that that's certainly a long term concern, and it's everything from exotic fish and apple snails and water hyacinths, uh, all of them affecting the the environment here. The, the settlement from the the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, um, that money obviously is going to go to good use. So I kind of I'm I don't know if this is going to strike a wrong chord for you, but is not that the oil spill was good. But was the oil spill, in a way, a blessing in disguise? Because without that money, it, it sounds like the erosion was happening before the oil spill. So is, it, is the fact that there's money now available kind of a solution to a problem that wouldn't have been there if it hadn't been for the oil spill? Well, I, I mean, you, it is definitely the silver lining to the oil spill. Uh, yeah. For instance, the, the criminal settlement, uh, when BP and Transocean pled guilty to criminal charges under the Clean Water Act, that's over $2.5 billion uh, that is being funneled to ecosystem restoration in the Gulf. And about half of that is going to, uh, to Louisiana for these sediment diversions and for barrier island work. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a silver lining, it's a plug of money. We are still waiting for the outcome of both uh, the natural resource damage assessment and of course, the civil trial uh, that is ta- that is going to start up again in New Orleans in January, uh. and uh, under the Restore Act, you know, a tremendous amount of money uh, could conceivably be coming back to the Gulf states for restoration. So you're you you're right; it's not the way you want to get it, but right. Um, right. Our our goal is to make sure that whatever does come in, no matter what the final total is, and there's no there's no predicting what that's going to be is to make sure that it's spent on the best possible projects. I mean, uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, I mean, people are corruptible, and I, I would hate to see it be uh, you know, wasted somehow. Well, I, I think I, I understand now better where you stand than we were 25 minutes ago when we first met each other on the phone. Um, I guess the last thing I want to know is, can, is there any way we can help? Do, we need, uh, do you need a, a public support, letter-writing campaign, anything like that? Uh, we very much uh, uh, welcome... Um, public support and uh there's never uh th- there's never a time uh when we couldn't use public support we are rallying people all of the national wildlife federation our partners are rallying people all over the gulf to make sure that the money that comes in from the bp horizon spill uh is spent properly um you can google mississippi river delta dot org uh and uh get links to all kinds of uh, work that we're doing and our partners are doing and we appreciate uh, uh anything that folks can do and repeat the website again mississippi delta it's mississippi river delta dot org just mississippi river delta one word dot org okay uh and, and while you were speaking i, I looked at the, the the google thing for the uh before like the mississippi delta then and now it is amazing how it really has changed a lot and uh it's just amazing if, if there was a time-lapse photography of that somehow which would be impossible unless it was animated but um I, well I, actually someone someone's done that with uh with you know, historic photography. Oh, uh, really? Oh, wow! I'll have to find that. You can see it. It's it's pretty it's pretty uh, impressive to watch. Restore the Mississippi River Delta. I, I definitely want to visit your area. I've always wanted to. And uh, speaking to you, I, I, there's so much more that I want to know about what's, what that area is like. Um, MississippiRiverDelta.org is the website that David gave us. David Mew, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News.